Ladies and gentlemen, Daisy is showing me how to replace an antique, no longer available, out of stock oil filter. Not only in the Philippines, but nowhere in America is this filter available any longer that I could find on the internet. Now this is called a hydraulic filter canister because inside here or a hydraulic filter basket because of the handle up on top. Now this basket comes apart or it's coming apart today that's for sure because this is not available any longer what we did is we popped off the top of the canister and this is a makeshift handle that I made the last time when I cleaned the filters with gasoline but that is no longer a viable option because this material is saturated with dirt. Now, I cannot show you just yet but this material no longer if I filled up this center hole with gasoline and closed off the bottom of the canister the gas would stay in there like it was a, a container of coffee for uh, 38 seconds it takes for it to drain through the filter material. This is a new filter and if I put the same amount of gas in there it would drain out in, in one or two or three seconds maximum. But this one you could you can actually blow you put your mouth on it and blow through air and this one you cannot blow air through that filter. So what needs to be done is there was an epoxy resin around the top and what we did was we took this Milwaukee drill with a bit that I got from use, working on the A10A from uh, at Fairchild Industries. These bits, I have a box of these. Actually, I don't know what they would cost, but they're Air, they're air Force grade Air Force grade steel drill bits and you could make thousands and thousands of holes in a piece of aluminum with this and it still doesn't get dull and now these were made by actually brazing the bits to the end of a quarter inch bolt this was for an angle drill to do the rib work on the A10A and this was my box of drill bits that got mistakenly put into my toolbox when I went home for Christmas. Daisy, why are you laughing? So, after you drill out the resin and try to keep it neat like this, you take up a, a center punch like this or you show them, you grab you sh Daisy's going to show you. There you go. Just pull out that resin. Okay. Right. Slide it down from the side, honey. Yeah, push it in hard. Don't worry about ripping the, the material. Watch you don't cut your, your feet. Okay. Twist it. There you go. Very nice. Okay, so that's how you, you take this resin off of here so it, nothing is holding it up because now we're going to pull this filter out through the bottom mm -hmm. here like this. Now when you're taking the bottom cap or the top cap off, what you need to do is mark it. Now I don't know what you're going to be able to see, but I made a line around here. I scribed a line around here so that when I take my actually this is a brake tool a brake adjustment tool now take the take the hammer and you tap a little bit there go ahead okay then you move the brake tool or a flat piece of you could use a piece of flat stock you could use a big screwdriver and you walk the brake tool around so that it's coming off evenly otherwise you'll you might kink it or crimp it a little bit and then you just have to straighten it out when you're done okay so basically this is going to pop out uh, now you can see the line that I made right here okay we can continue with that Daisy okay continue with the continue hammering yep okay go ahead 
Okay. I'm going to turn it a little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Don't worry about that. Okay. Oh. Is it off? No. Oh. Okay. Keep turning it. Yeah, we're good. Okay, stop one more time. Okay. Okay, you know what, honey, you, you. Okay, well, this that's how you get it off. Tell you what, you come on this side over here. And you will hold the canister. No, I'll, I will hold. You will hold. You will hold the camera. Okay. Just hold the camera. You're gonna put your little hand through the handle. Huh? Very nice. Okay. And I will be the one to knock it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. You hold this with your hand. Let me turn it when I wish to turn it. Okay. Okay. That's off now. Okay. Now you have this epoxy here that we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. Just hold it on the top. You could pick it up a little bit. Pick up. No, you hold the camera only. Look, only the camera on the top here. Okay? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So you just take this drill. Hold it in. Don't move the position of the camera. Mm -hmm. Leave it right where it is. Now we're going to take this. Alright, now what I did was I just destroyed the, the connection between the epoxy and the metal barrier, but I gave it a spot, a relief. Those holes are like a relief mechanism. Now you just take this pair of needle nose pliers and you just continue walking it around like this, pulling the epoxy out. Okay, now it's loose. And now the filter canister is going to come out of here. Now what you're going to see is that's the outside of the canister. This is the inside of the canister. There is no top or bottom to either one of those sections. But what you're going to see now is you're going to see a material that's saturated with garbage. This is so saturated, it's just like a, uh, wait, I will show you. I'm going to take this brake cleaning tool now, I'm going to use it for a scraper. And I'm going to show you, it's got, it's got a solid film of grease 
no penetration whatsoever through this filter. So we're going to take this filter. This is now garbage. Don't move the camera yet. Okay, we're going to take this filter and I'm going to cut B. It will not fit. It will not fit in this canister, but this is for a Mitsubishi hydraulic filter system and this filter basket is from the same Mitsubishi A, A Mitsubishi hydraulic system. So I'm going to cut this filter down, I'll knock the top, I don't have to knock the top, I can cut this and cut it here and then put epoxy, make sure this slip this in, this new cartridge into the hole. Once I get the cap off, put epoxy in this base right here and put epoxy when this slips in to the base. Picture this being off when I put epoxy on the base of the the base of the uh, paper cartridge and epoxy on the cap, the bottom cap and then I just put it back together and you have yourself what would be I would imagine this would be a sixty dollar oil filter maybe more it could be less but I don't imagine you could get a, 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 a non-magnetic stainless steel canister for less than sixty dollars if you could find one and that was the rough price I found and the way that you put this back together you're going to use a two-part epoxy. Any bonding, Bondo, you could use Bondo from an automobile Bondo. You could use this all-purpose epoxy that they put fiberglass or plywood on boats with. This works fine. You could use any other brand epoxy as long as it's a good two-part epoxy. And the way you do that is you mix it up evenly even one part to part A to part B is an even amount and that's how this is done so I'm going to take just watch your feet and put this on the floor mm. okay so I'm going to take this camera now from Daisy and I'm going to show you the parts individually this is the inner tube that the new filter is going to go around once I pop it out now, when you buy a new filter, you have to make sure that this paper cartridge is also the same width, which is about five-eighths of an inch as this paper cartridge, and it is. I can put my finger in there. This is basically for the same machine. Both of these are for Mitsubishi machines. This is the replacement filter for a similar stainless steel or similar cartridge. So this is the right diameter, the right width paper filter. This, as you could see, is absolutely no good at all. See the grease? It's basically covered with grease. Um, I've, I've cleaned this once before, but I what I noticed the last time I cleaned it the, wasn't making noise, but these poppet valves right here, this is a poppet valve type of a, or a relief valve. I call it a poppet valve. This goes into the bottom here, like that. The poppet valve, being that the hydraulic fluid was not flowing through here, the poppet valve was going thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So I'm working at a little bit of a disadvantage. I have my robo boot on. This is some K-Pak K-Pak doormat that I tape around my leg first. This is some sheet metal that I found on the side of the road and I put some pop rivets in there. Ah, that's a story in and of itself. I bought a pop rivet gun that has no jaws in it. <laughs> Welcome to the Philippines. Now you could use the vise for some of this stuff if you were working by yourself. This is a man vise. You can tell it's a man vise by the size of the vise. And the cost of this vise was $90 back in the year 2000 at Northern Tool in Florida. I don't know why it was only $90 because it weighs 55 kilos. 
it has six inch jaws. They're hardened steel jaws. It has an anvil on the top. You can also use it to bend down 90, 90 degree material. And you could use this to bend round stock. Light duty, but still. Now this vise, not only is it weigh 55 kilos, but it has a double locking turret. And not only does it have a turret, but it works off a spindle. So it turns 180 degrees. When you turn it 180 degrees, it has a lock for square stock, octagon stock, or round stock that you can put in there like this and tighten down with the jaws. Okay, and in addition, it has a, a, a pipe vise that will accommodate up to a four inch pipe when the jaws are open. The way that this locks is one lock is on the turret, one lock is when the jaws close, when the jaws close like this, now you can spin it like this, but once those jaws close, 